hey you out there in the cold getting lonely getting old can you feel me hey you standing in the aisles with itchy feet and fading smiles can you feel me hey you don't help them to bury the Don't give in without a fight. Hey, out there on the road, sitting naked by the phone, can you touch me? Hey, with your ear against the wall, waiting for someone to call out, would you touch me? Hey you, would you help me to carry the stone? Open your heart, I'm coming home. Hey you, Paul. Welcome to another edition of Pink Floyd Friday and to MT Guitar. We're doing Hey You, which was off of Pink Floyd's double album, The Wall. And this was the first song off of the second album. And uh, plot-wise, this, this song is kind of uh, showing how the main character, Pink, has retreated from being an alienated rock star, retreated from society, I should say, and is feeling a little bit uh, of, of regret about that, but it's kind of too late. The wall is, is built, so to speak, and... Uh, you know, Pink can't contact anybody else, so he's sort of calling for help. Um, so, as far as the, the instrumentation, the composition, it's really amazing uh, guitar parts here, partially because they have tuned up, they had tuned up the guitar to Nashville tuning, which is when you take the EADG wound bass strings and you, and you put on some high strings, usually from a 12 string set, an octave up, and then you, then you would use uh, those high G strings on the B and E strings. So then everything is up an octave from standard tuning, right? It's called Nashville tuning. But then even further than that, Gilmore actually said, okay, well, we're going to put this string two octaves up. Or maybe the producer said it. But <laughs> you, you, you have this, this bass E string as the high E string as well. So it's really high up there. Creates these wonderful open strings. Um, that are really high in the register. Of course, that's a lot of a lot of work, right? So we're not going to do that. I went ahead and arranged it for six string standard, so you can play it without any tuning uh, changes. And there's two main guitar parts that are happening. There's the arpeggios, which I arranged for finger style, although you're welcome to play it with a pick as well. And there's the you know the wonderful raking chords uh, with these sort of add two chords that that I'll show you as well. So we'll go through every section. All the, all the parts, including the arpeggios and the chords. Uh, we're going to cover the solo next week, so please tune in for that. Just a beautiful solo by Gilmore. Instrumentation-wise, um, there's a fretless bass, fretless electric bass, that actually Gilmore played, not Waters, and there's some nice uh, riffs going on. Richard Wright played a, a Fender Rhodes, and, and I covered a, a little riff of that on the demo. I'll teach you as well. And uh, they also use a, a synthesizer, and uh, during, the, during the part where before the last verse, there's actually a drill, a hand drill being drilled into something that they recorded that makes it sound like the worms part. Uh, so uh, there's also a sonar that, that we recognize in echoes, right? So a, a throwback to the echoes, sonar sound. So really interesting production going on and, you know, wouldn't expect anything less from Pink Floyd. There is a tab for this on the Patreon and a chord sheet that you can uh, check out. I make Pink Floyd Friday available at the lowest level of $2 a month. So you can check that out. Also subscribe, hit the bell icon and the thumbs up. And I really appreciate your support. So let's zoom in and get going on this lesson. All right, so there's a lot to cover. We're going to start with the intro. Um, and again, I made the introduction about how we arranged this for standard tuning. So in order to make this happen 
we need to be here, right? So ninth fret, uh, fourth and third strings, seventh fret, second string. And we go second string, fourth, third. And I'm using my thumb, index, and middle strings for that. For most of the finger picking, you're welcome to use a pick, which is what they did on the recording. So second, fourth, third. Then middle finger on the eighth fret, second string. Second, third, fourth, second, third. So that would be repeat. Okay, slide down two frets and we start off with the same. Uh, so this is now D minor add two or D add two. And you go second, sorry, sus two. What am I saying? Sus two. So then you go second string, fourth, third. But then you bar the fifth fret first string and then you hit it, and then middle finger on the sixth fret to make it a D minor, second string, third string, first string, third string. So that would be repeat. Okay, so that whole intro is down two frets. So that's the, the intro, it happens one time, and then it happens three times for a bass solo. And that's, I mean, I call it a solo, it's, it's Gilmore just riffing on an electric bass. So you would do that a total of four times before the lyrics come in. All right, then the lyrics come in, and we've got the same exact pattern for the first, uh, first three bars here. So the same pattern as, as before in the intro. Hey you. Right, three times. Now we go to a B minor, and so we're going to do uh, first three strings, seventh fret, ninth fret, fourth string. And you go second, fourth, third, first, second, third, first, second. Twice. Okay? So let's do that. Hey, you. The B minor. Repeat, good. Okay, and then that happens uh, again, so that repeats. Takes us into the chorus. All right, the chorus, this first chord here is arguably the hardest part for the left hand, I think, uh, because you have to kind of create this D sus2 way up here in order to sound like the recording. You could just, you know, you could always sort of go revert to open chords if you wanted to, but to sound like the recording, you would do that, right? So that would be fifth fret, second string, barring the first two strings actually with the fifth fret, seventh fret, third and fourth strings with the second and third fingers. And you're gonna go second string, fourth, third, and then put your pinky on the seventh fret, second string, first, second, third, first, third. So that would be hey. Right, so okay, definitely doable. Then we have these nice triads here. So G, ninth fret, fourth string, seventh fret, eighth fret, and you go a little pattern here. So second, fourth, third, second, D, seventh fret, fourth, th third, second strings. 2nd, 4th, 3rd, and then uh, anticipation to C, so. Okay, so that would be. Now you go to a C triad here to finish the phrase, so it would be 10, 9, 8. So then you go, it's an anticipation on the 2nd string. And then uh, the pattern begins here, 3rd, 4th, 3rd, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 2nd, 3rd. So, la, repeat, okay, we're going to run this whole section in a sec, but then you go to B minor, then you go 
second, fourth, third, first, second, third, first, second. Same exact pattern, two frets down for an A minor. Second, first, third. Okay. Then it goes back to the to the intro. Or the intro part, which is now the interlude, where Richard Wright comes in. So let's run the whole chorus. Hey. For the demo, I, I played the introduction of Richard Wright's Electric Roads, right? Uh, it's Which is, if you want to do it, it would be 7th fret 1st string, and then 10 to 8 pull off 2nd string, back to 5, it's a 7. Da, 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 da. Then, 10, 1st, 2nd uh, string, 12 to 13 hammer on, 10, 12. So that would be... Here we go. Hey, now we're into the second verse. All right, so the arpeggios are the hard part, so hopefully we'll have smooth sailing from here. Uh, we're going to do an E add two. Some would call it an E add nine, basically the same thing. Um, and you're going to do second and third fingers, fifth and fourth strings, ninth fret, rake up. I like to do it with my third finger. It's a habit from flamenco. You can also do it with your thumb or first finger, right? So, hey. Now on the recording, they just leave it hanging for three whole bars, uh, which is a lot. So you might want to keep the rhythm going. So I wrote it out as down, down, down to mimic the bass kick, right? So that's uh, down, down. Sorry. So that's rake up, down, 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 down. Down, 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 down. And then B minor, actually rake it down. Down, 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 B minor bar chord. Repeat. Down. Uh. Third bar, here's the B minor. Really nice, right? Now a D sus2, so that would be like a D bar chord, but instead five, seven, seven, five, five. So you rake it down. Same pattern, two bars. Now, G, four fingers, G, D, C, down, 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 down. Now, I'll rake up with B minor. B, uh, sorry, you don't add anything there, just a, just a whole bar. So, rake up, A minor, and then rake up an E minor up here. And then you would do a build up to the solo by down strums on an eighth note crescendo. So, open your heart. I'm coming home. Three, four, one, two, three, four. All right, then we're into the solo section. I want you to be able to play through it all, so even though I'm going to teach you the solo next week, I'll show you how to play the rhythm part, right? Which is basically. Uh, bass line here. Um, so, octaves is what I recommend. So, sixth string open, second fret, fourth string. And you barely touch the fifth string so it's muted. Then you go to 2-4. Again, mute the fifth string. 3-5, 4-2. So it's octaves, E, F sharp, G, F sharp. Four times. Same thing now with A minor, so five and seven. Four times, five, seven, eight, seven, five, seven. Repeat. If you want to play that riff up here, it's uh, like I did in the demo, it's nine, 11, 12, 11 on the third string. For the A minor, second fret, 10th string. You could even bend it, 10, 12, 13, 12, or 10, 12, bend, 12, okay? And then we have a really cool solo next week. All right, so then it just ends after uh, two times of that whole progression on the E minor. Then the bridge. 
And uh, actually, uh, so so the so the bridge is kind of different here. We have some whole whole different progression here. So it's C. So down, down, up. It's kind of what I recommend here for each chord. C, D, and then a quick G, T, which is actually a bar of two, and then C. Down, down, up, down. Repeat. G, D, C. Actually, for the after you do one, two, I recommend down, 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 up, down. Okay, so again, C, D, G, D, down, 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 up, down. C, D, and then E minor, which is at the same time that. So what you could do is C, D, a bar of E minor, three, four, right into the riff. You'd only have time for one riff because it goes to D minor. Nice. Now, the third verse is the same as the second, as far as there's the... They did add one guitar part, though, uh, but they have this going on and this going on while Roger, Ro while Roger Waters sings up an octave. And, you know, it's the more intense part. The only guitar part they added is the power chords. Like, uh, you know, on, on the... Hey, you! So they're just adding like a B5, A5, E5. Um, so you could add power chords to that, but of course now that's three guitar parts, kind of hard to juggle all that. So I would just stick to the first two and, and choose your, your, your poison there. Um, and that's it. Then, you know, basically it goes back to the interlude, which is this, for one final bass solo. And then the song ends. So it is a, a it is a beast of a song. It's it's almost five minutes, but we've covered every section, and every guitar part, um, and so besides the solo. So we'll cover that next week. We kind of went quickly here. It is more intermediate, even advanced. So you know, let me know if anything was unclear, or if I if I rushed through anything. Other than that, have fun with this, and uh, we'll see you next week. All right, well done, everybody. A nice Pink Floyd Friday. Uh, looking forward to seeing you next lesson. Bye.